Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart. And in this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to take a look at the SPY, the Russell 2000 ETF, IWM, the VIX, uh, my three key ETFs that uh, I usually look at for the economy, semiconductors, home builders, and financials. And lastly, the NASDAQ biotech. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's start off here with the uh, S&P 500 ETF, the SPY. You can see we just did not have much movement this week at all. And uh, we a four-day week, very compressed in here. And uh, yesterday, Inauguration Day, uh, the SPY was up 83 cents, closing at 226.74. So a little doji candle in here, very tight. Now it is back above the 10-day moving average. Uh, we've kind of been vacillating up and down amongst that. Now, my, uh, my Elliott wave count here on the SPY still holds that my, we're working uh, minor wave, possibly a completion of minor wave five. I've got my doubts about that, uh, but we haven't, we haven't taken out the level yet that's going to you know, indicate uh, that makes you know, wave three the shorter wave. Okay, so uh, until that happens, I am not going to move to my alternate account. When that does happen, I will move to this alternate account and we will be finishing and working the uh, third minute wave, but right, or third minor wave. But right now, this is the wave count I've got because you honestly just never know what this market's going to do. Now, the inclination is to think, you know, based on other things I'm seeing and other indices I'm seeing, is that I believe that the market's going to continue to push a little higher and subdivide higher. Uh, but uh, we just got to let the market show us what it wants to do and continue to monitor it on a daily and weekly basis. So that's the SPY. All right, so that's the picture there, the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, on the other hand, is uh, in a minor wave three that uh, we are looking at here. Uh, and therefore, we've got Manu wave one, two, three, four, working, a, getting ready to work and looking for the fifth minute wave to push up here and complete minor wave three. So once we get that, one, two, once we get three, then we're gonna to have to have four and then the fifth and final minor wave of the fifth and final intermediate wave, okay? So that's the wave count we've got on this. This is the same as on the Dow Industrials. We just haven't gotten it on the S&P 500 yet. And we, you know, we may get it this week. We'll just watch and see what the market gives us. But right now, I'm watching for this to pull back. It, you know, we may have uh, bottomed out here on Thursday, but we could also pull back a little bit further back into this low here, uh, low of 130.29, and that would tie in with the 55-day moving average I've got that's coming up in here. I wouldn't be surprised to see this pull back into the, uh, you know, the, well, that area, you know, 131 to 132. Uh, so we'll watch for that. Okay, so that's the Russell 2000. Let's take a look at one of my indicators, the VIX. The VIX fell out of bed on Friday. Okay, so with the move to the upside, the VIX came back down and closed below the 10-day moving average. We we'd, we'd had a little move going on here. I thought we might duplicate what we had over here, but we only got three out of the four days. And now we've backed down below, closing at 11.54, you know, basically indicating, you know, risk off. The market is, is uh, uh, you know, actually, um, not risk off, risk on. It, it's indicating that there's no fear in the market right now. So it's reinforcing the whole concept that, you know, the market's, you know, fairly quiet. There's no, no fear in the market. Uh, and we've had these little moves where it starts to try to make a thrust to the upside, but you get no follow through. Okay, so that's what we're watching for. And uh, so now every time this is pulled back down like this, we get several days back below. So we may be getting ready for the next uh, next leg to the upside. All right, so that's the VIX. Right, let's take a look at the semiconductors. Semiconductors continue to push higher also. Now we had this big reversal candle. This is a weekly chart. I've been looking to see, do we get a close below the low of this week, but we've never gotten it. Now, we haven't taken out this high yet. Until we take out that high, which we're very close to doing, if we take out that high, then, you know, the scenario to me of trying to get a close below this low 
goes out the window. I'm not looking for that anymore. Now, we still haven't gotten confirmation here on the RSI uh, of this. We keep showing bearish divergence at this point. So that's the picture on semiconductors. Home builders, not much action, just real tight consolidation in here. This is a daily chart. You can see we just didn't do hardly anything. Up 16 cents, closing at $34.21 uh, on, the, uh, on the day. And just really sideways here. Where did we close last Friday? 34.36, so we're down 15 cents for the week. Uh, now, when I look at this, we could be doing some kind of little topping, but you know this needs to break down further in order to even uh, you know, start coming that way. Uh, from a bigger picture, it does look like a big topping uh, formation going on. But again, you know, we need to see this break down. And I can draw a trend line in here because that's what I'm seeing. It looked like it tried to do it and uh, just couldn't hold it. Uh, but you never know. So I'm going to put that trend line in there to watch. The financials, XLF. This has been super strong, of course, since the uh, November. That's been the story. Everybody's been talking about that. You know, the banks and Goldman Sachs and everything else going right through the roof. Uh, when you look at the RSI, you can see the huge peak in momentum occurred really right in this level here in mid-November. And, uh, and really, that looks to me like the third of a third wave. Uh, you can almost say from this low here, one, two, three, four, would imply consolidation very much like what we're seeing on the indices, like the SPY and uh, the Russell 2000, et cetera, uh, that we're looking for a possible breakout to the upside. We just haven't seen it yet for one more one more move in here. As you can see, the 55-day moving average is very rapidly uh, moving to the upside. So that's the momentum. That's the picture on XLF. Uh, so no breakdown really occurring there. I think this is just short-term consolidation. And look, when you look at this too, just look at something here. Where did this pull back? If I go to here, we haven't even pulled back. If we, do, you know, almost got 23.6%. Um, and I would have thought that at a minimum we'd be getting that. So we're very close to that. What did we get down here when you look from this low to here? We got um, 38, just a little over 38.2 percent. Okay, so that's the picture on the um, on the financials. And then the last one we want to take a look at is biotech. And look at the the chop that's been going on on biotech. Okay, this has been going on uh, all so all of 2016 and into this year. Although right now it looks like we're getting some kind of symmetrical triangle compressing in here. So which way is it going to go? We got to let the market tell us. But if I had to guess, let me zoom back out of this. Right now, this looks like a first leg, a choppy sideways consolidation. And I would guess we're going to get another leg. That would be my thinking. But we need to let this tell us which way it's going to break. Are we going to come down and break this trend line and start to move down here and, and go to lower lows? Uh, that's what I'm thinking right now. And mainly, again, remember, when you have overlapping ways like this, this is corrective action. You are not in an impulsive move up or down, okay? All right, that's the picture on the, uh, the NASDAQ biotech. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and share it on uh, social media. And uh, check out the post I've got over on my website today. I've got a post, uh, uh, Trump presidency. Uh, you know, which way is the market going to go? What's the market going to tell us about the Trump presidency? And I talk about some things I'm looking at there. And uh, I think you'll find that really interesting. All right, everyone, have a great week. We'll talk to you in the next video.